as this beautiful island was coming closer into view, our next seed friend shared his arriving home at last. Nevertheless, for many of us coming from the mainland U.S. and around the world, eagerly anticipated landing on this vacation paradise. Can you all guess where we are at right now? We are just a uh, step outside of uh, the airplane that we took for 5 hours and 39 minutes. And now we are off the plane and say aloha to all of you. So we just step outside of Hertz car rental and we rent a compact size car and ready to head to the restaurant that the, for our lunch time. As my husband Michael and I exclaimed, the capital city of the Big Island was only a bit more than 100 miles away from the Kona Airport. We were immediately drawn into this beautiful island by her natural beauty and the geographic diversity. The Big Island is officially known as the Island of Hawaii. It is the largest island of the United States with a total surface of 4,029 square miles. Its surface area is also greater than that of all other Hawaiian islands combined. The population of the Big Island is slightly more than 200,000. The Big Island, which mostly lived in and around the two large population centers in the island, Hilo on the east coast and Kona on the west coast. The Big Island is the youngest and largest of the Hawaiian islands, and it is still growing caused by the volcanic activity. Mauna Kea is with 13,796 feet as the tallest mountain in the state and the tallest sea mountain in the world. Mauna Loa is the largest volcano on Earth in terms of a volume and area covered. After nearly half an hour of driving, we were so delighted to discover the herbivore vegan food. It's just 10 minute walking distance from the Kailuakona beaches. We ordered plant-based poke bowl and jackfruit nachos. Dragon fruit natural, full of flavor, and uh, it packed with a lot of uh, high quality plant based protein. Vegan poke bowl, tastes and looks just like the real thing. Probably even better. Highly recommend. Dragon fruit smoothie. The herbivore is a small food shack and it's a uh, jackfruit. Nachos is uh, the place's stable food. Uh, very modest, but yet produce really good quality food. We really appreciate you. Thank you. herbivores at the heart of Kona area. After having a delicious lunch at the herbivore, we try to find our way to the beach. A secret pathway, a Kona local pointed us that we can go through this little pathway to go to the main beach area. Very beautiful flower here, greeny, and a warm hospitality. Aloha. This is amazing. Look at these trees.
Look at the air roots. Good for you. We found our way to the Kona Shopping Village at the legendary Kona Inn Annex. Specialty stores and local goodies can be found here. A restaurant with a view. Look at that aqua color seawater. Wonderful. This is a priceless view. Look at that. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. The western coast of the Big Island is dominated by the North and South Kona district, and Kailua Kona is the lively center of both. This historic seaside town sits in the center of both districts, a few miles south of the Kona International Airport. Not too long ago, Kailua was a sleepy fishing village. Now, because of its central location and great weather, it has transformed into a lively town that is the activity capital of the Big Island. Water so clear. Many world-renowned resorts, including the King Kamehameha Kona Beach Hotels, is located at the bay. I just sent a picture to Brad. I think our musician friend Brad would like this place, Just Wooks. It's a special dealer for locally made ukulele. Musicians should be interested about this place. A purple one. Reminds me of a prince's purple ring. Strolling around town, we found the tropical fruit wax apples that I enjoyed so much during my youth years in Taiwan at the Kona Farmers Market located in the heart of Kona, close to Kailua Bay. You can find plenty of fresh fruits and vegetables, flowers, and handmade local arts and crafts. It's perfect for us to stock up on healthy snacks to snack on at the Airbnb where we stay for a day trip or to buy gifts to take home. I'm so happy I find another vegetarian, vegan friendly local restaurant at Kailua Kona. I'm still learning to say the name correctly. And uh, the chef were super cool. And he's sharing me with some of his uh, over the top sample of um, Kona coffee smoothie. So I share, I will share with you a little bit. Even if it's simple, it looks out of this world. So we're ready to enjoy their creation of local fresh ingredients. When I first encountered the local rap at Kailua Kona location, the sound of the blender and the heavy metal music were rhythmically in sync. Don't be fooled by the alternative vibe of this cool food joint. The friendly chefs will make sure you are happy with your orders. Most of the ingredients for their wraps, burritos, tacos, sandwiches, salads, smoothies, freshly squeezed juices, and local kombucha come from local farmers. Vegan and gluten-free options are available. Best of all, prices are really reasonable. So this is their vegan quesadilla and this is what I mentioned the over the top Kona coffee concoction uh, topped with lots of healthy toppings and gotta be delicious. 
It's time to bid you aloha, ahiahi. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Aloha, kakahiaka. It's day two of our Big Island trip. We will continue exploring the west coast of the island, and one of the activities will be on a Kona coffee plantation tour after the lunch. But first of all, we'll be visiting the Arli Garden Marketplace. The Arli Garden Marketplace is not a farmers market, but mostly an open air marketplace. There are many stands here selling local arts and crafts, as well as some places for a quick bite. Food vendors include Swami's Dosa Grill. It's a vegetarian slash vegan Indian cuisine. Milba's vegan and gluten free bakery. Big Island sweet treats with shave ice. Kettle corn, ice cream, and dessert creations. From November to April, during well season, well of a crepe is on site with fresh dessert and savory crepes. The marketplace has about 25 plus unique local vendors on the market grounds. Michael got a lifelike wooden turtle sculpture for my father-in-law and a beautiful Hawaiian shirt for himself. For me. I think there might be something wonderful just around the corner. I was attracted by those colorful yet elegant watercolor greeting cards from afar. Luckily, I got to meet the artist Davy Slay in person while she was preparing another masterpiece. Like to drink coffee? Yeah. yeah. Kona coffee is one of the best. Yeah, I can't wait. Nice. Very acidic. All right. Debbie's husband, Jean Slay, is a fused glass artist. I pick up this beautiful Kona coffee berry plant fused glass art, and it's now graced our living room. After visiting the Ali Garden Marketplace, we are heading up to a local famous diner, the Coffee Shack, in Captain Cook, off the Kona Coast. Aloha! I'm at a very famous local coffee joint, the Coffee Shack.、Uh, at the portion of the Kona is called the Captain Cook, famous for coffee orchard. Uh, after we are having lunch at the coffee shack, check around our surroundings, and we are ready to take a coffee orchard tour at two o'clock. So stay with me; more fun stuff to show you. Michael and I were fortunate enough to get the best sitting inside a restaurant. For lunch, we ordered their Hawaiian French toast with homemade lua bread and sprinkled with powdered sugar. And the papaya special was half papaya filled with mixed fruit, little koi yogurt served with coconut pound cake. I also got to meet this friendly gecko and shared some Namo Amitabha Buddha chanting together. On the way down, we go to our very first Kona coffee farm tour. Woohoo! As we are waiting for a tour at the Hella Tree. Organic coffee farm.、Um, I'm taking all of you to have a look of the surroundings, and the tour will be one-hour tour, and we'll be able to see how the coffee plants were grown and how to process coffee berries, and possibly to have a tasting. Or cupping experience. It's a very natural environment, and these are all the guests、uh, waiting for the tour. And of course, 
we can see a little glimpse of Pacific Ocean. We are on top of the mountain ridge area of the southern Kona region. Must be a little bit of a tasting room and sample room. All the different bags of different coffee bean products. Cool. There you go. Beautiful. Would you like a bag for this? Um, no, no. Do I need to put it in or tap it? Yeah. Oh, no. Good, thank you. Good. Beautiful stuff. Where did everyone come from? I know Texas. Mm. Texas? And where did everyone else come from? California, SoCal. California. North Carolina. North Carolina? Yep. Oh. <laughs> Your flight was longer than ours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is a 100-year-old Japanese coffee plantation. So coffee never originated here on the island. It was brought here in the early 1800s. And the first species that they brought here was actually from Brazil. They thought if they took that Brazilian species and brought it over here, that it would grow the same. Uh, Brazil was actually the main coffee supplier for the world back in the 1800s. And they were wrong, it actually ended up dying. So in 1850, they brought over this species from Guatemala. Uh, the Japanese were the first to break out of sugarcane farming. So they were the ones to kind of really start the coffee. The elevation, climate, and soil are very important. The trunks themselves are 100 years old, but the trees will only give off production for about uh, as a six-year-old tree. You will be able to tell what needs to be pruned. So in February, we chopped this tree down back here. Uh -huh. It's probably about a five or six-year-old tree. So when you pick the, uh, the cherries off, it's kind of like grapes. It's going to dry up. It has that like stem vine. Um, so when you are pruning, you'll be able to see the previous year's production. And if it isn't giving you a good production that year, then you might as well chop it down. And in two years, it will grow back. So when we That's talk, what we name our business after. It's a native tree that the Hawaiians have been making art out of for many, many years. Um, they process these long green leaves off the tree. So they pick them, they dry them out, it turns a nice beige color. They process them through a wooden rolling table. This little sharp spine on the leaf will pop off and then you are exposed to um, a fresh leaf that you strip into about quarter of an inch strips. The strips can be bigger or smaller, but um, for the hats to weave it is going to be smaller. Um, they make baskets, earrings, bracelets. There's a lot of different products that they make. Ripe until the shell rots away like this. So when this green turns into this brown, the mac nut will be revealed and you actually crack this open and the mac nut will be inside. The birds get to it usually before I do. Pulper, which is kind of like a cheese grater and it's gonna rip the coffee beans from its skin. If you're making a wet fermentation, it will go into this tank where it sits for 12 hours. And once um, the 12 hours is up, it will go through a spin cycle, basically a, um, like a cycle wash spinning really fast, removing all the water from the product and it will go onto a drying deck. Our goal is to use our natural resource, which is the sun. If the sun's not out, we have a backup generated dryer down on the South Farm. Um, the nice curator lady at the Hella Trio Organic Farm then took us to an outdoor guest hut for more Kona Coffee Ed. Cool. So we're going to flip through this book real quick. Um, what I have is a little bit of what I spoke of earlier was that Kona Snow. So this is going to be the gardenia flowers. Very fragrant. We have bees as our natural pollinators. We actually host some hives down on the south farm. We cannot guarantee bees are going to only pollinate, you know, do organic stuff, but we're trying to save them. 
Um, there's a bee problem all over the world, and every branch looked like this because then they could just strip it and move on to the next tree. But for the most part, they're going through picking the ripe red cherries. Um, you want to just pick, that's why Kona Coffee is so secret that they're filling up their bag, um, or else they're going to not be making the money that they've got there. Um, so then they go down to the south farm. So this is our mill down there. It produces 5,000 pounds an hour, and for about two months of uh, the harvest season, coffee beans out of its skin. We have some tea called cascara, and this we are going to sample. We had some really big toe groups today. Um, like, are we going to have enough tea to make a tea with it? So this we just dry out and make a cold brew tea with it by leaving it in cold water, and then it makes a lightly caffeinated, lightly caffeinated tea full of antioxidants. And then breaking this around, in hopes that the sun is out. If the sun isn't out, these are gonna grow milk you after day three. So we will, um, in that case, we'll put them into this generated dryer. We try to stay away from the kids, but here in Hawaii, we have to use a hydrator. So we actually take the coffee bean, still in its cherry skin, and we put it into a dehydrator for one week, and then it will look more like a raisin here. So it, when it's in the dehydrator, it's pulling all that sugar and fruit from the shell into the coffee bean. So that, and we'll go through and husk off the skin and go through the next process that I'm about to talk about. But when you go to dry mill, why do we take it to a dry mill if it's already dry? Because there's another outer casing. So you can use your fingertips, not that green. We have to sort it by size. So it's basically a sifting, uh, sifting machine and there is, it's called the gravity table. There's screens for each size of the bean, and they're gonna drop down into the hole that fits for their size. The table moves around. It all gets sorted out. They size them into the burlap sacks, and once they are sorted by size, we sort them by color. So in this blue, or in the blue roof room over there, this green machine, we toss all the beans in up here. They're slowly trickling down like a waterfall, and the cameras inside here will see the elevation. Um, you do have to boil this one but it, the Hawaiians have been passing it down for many, many years to reduce respiratory and sinus pressure from bog. Bog is what the volcano creates and the trade winds blow it on back here and it gets trapped in uh, Kailua because Kohala kind of holds it all in. Um, today's actually a really cool After the coffee farm tour has concluded, we stayed for a little longer, marveling these wonderful creations by the Mother Earth. Those emerald color coffee berries will one day turn into ruby red when they are ready to be harvested. I close my eyes, immersing myself in the serenity of the nature. I realize that humans are no different than the chirpy insects and singing birds and all the living creatures as we were all nurtured by the kindest mother of all. Therefore, we shall love and respect the earth as we do to our family and friends. There's so much to see on the big island of Hawaii. Pu Honau o Honau Nau National Historical Park and the Hawaii Volcanoes National Park are coming up. Stay tuned!